Center in Los Angeles, Shaquille O'Neal, David Robinson, Greg Willard tosses, and the San Antonio Spurs control Avery Johnson. Moving it across against Kobe Bryant, Jaron Jackson is in the starting lineup for the first time this season. The backdoor pass, and Mario Eli puts it down. I, can, I think you can see already, Mark, more movement by San Antonio. Too much standing here early in the season. A nice backdoor cut there for Mario Eli. Rod Hopper. Kobe Bryant. Here's Glenn Rice. The game is tied at two. San Antonio Spurs have come off a loss at home to the Milwaukee Bucks and sputtering recently. They have won five and lost six over the last 11 games. Like to see this man a bit more active in the scoring column. They're going to need more from David, especially with Sean Elliott being out. He's going to have to raise his production. Always a slow starter. Jackson cheating off, but it's single coverage on Shaquille, who draws the foul. This is going to be a real problem right now. David Robinson picking up his first foul. They're probably going to have to move Duncan over now. The strategy has been, Marv, that they're going to alternate when they pick up a foul, then Duncan will go over and play him. But they, these two guys cannot get in foul trouble here today. So Shaquille O'Neal, who has certainly had his difficulties at the free throw line, Shaq comes at averaging just under 27 per game, second behind Allen Iverson, averaging 14 rebounds. That's second to Dikembe Mutombo, but goes 0 for his first two. However, AC Green able to get to the rebound. Green now being played by Robinson, so you see the the shuffle defensively. Tim Duncan now guarding Shaquille O'Neal, and he goes right at him. gone by and the game tied at two. Duncan, nice move on Shaq. O'Neal. Duncan. A little surprised that Tim Duncan's trying to post him up, but he might step out and, on the block and face him up a little bit, Marv. He's not, not strong enough to play against Shaq and then with his back to the basket. And Duncan coming off a poor shooting game the other night against the Bucks. Here's Green. AC Green over David Robinson. You know, Phil Jackson has been very surprised and very happy at the combinations of A.C. Green and Robert Ory, what he's getting from that power forward position, 10 points and 12 rebounds. Oh. Avery Johnson headed to the free throw line. Kobe Bryant picks up the, the personal. And here is Avery Johnson. San Antonio Spurs 7-7 seven seven on the road. 
and have had big problems on the road in recent weeks. Well, when they got up to the good start, Marv, 13 and 3, really where they had their problems, they went out on the road and were 1 and 4. And went on the East Coast trip. Detroit spanked them pretty good. Then they went to Indiana, finished up, excuse me, they went to Toronto, then Indiana. Three tough losses. And it's the first time they had lost three in a row in about two years. And Bryant not able to hit. So both clubs off to a, a slow start. Lakers with a 4-3 lead. Shot clock at six. Duncan. And fouled by O'Neal. See, that time he took him out on the floor. He turned and faced him, and he used his quickness. Then he got inside and got the foul. He's not going to be able to play with his back to the basket against Shaq. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> On a beautiful 75 degree Christmas night in the City of Angels, we welcome you to the new Staples Center downtown LA for the defending NBA champion San Antonio Spurs and the Los Angeles Lakers, the second half of our holiday doubleheader. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Jim Gray. We are early moments. Three minutes gone by. Here's Kobe Bryant. And the Spurs with a 5-4 lead on the Lakers. Avery Johnson pulls it up. And here's Jared Jackson in the starting lineup for the first time this season. A.C. Green with the rebound. Doug, the Lakers come in as uh, the hot team of the NBA, record of 22 and 5. They've won seven in a row, 14 of the last 15 games. Well, Mark, for the people who have not seen the Lakers this year, they're doing it with defense, not like last year where they had to score big points to win. They are playing terrific defense led by Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq having a MVP type start, doing it in all departments. Foul is called on. On Kobe Bryant, that is his second. And a look at the starting lineup. The San Antonio Spurs going with Tim Duncan, Jaron Jackson, David Robinson, Avery Johnson, Mario Ellie. You see the, the Lakers with their usual starting lineup. Glenn Rice, A.C. Green, Shaq, Kobe, and Derek Fisher here. Or rather, Derek Fisher checking in now for Kobe Bryant. Rod Hopper is the other guard. And Mark, when you look at the matchups, Duncan is being played by Shaquille O'Neal, something we did not see last year in the playoffs. A nice backdoor cut. Now, that's the second time they've run that play today. First play of the game, they get a layup for Mario Eli. This time, Jaron Jackson gets fouled. So, more movement in the San Antonio offense. They've got to find a way to create some easy scores. They've been working and struggling on offense. Yes, Greg Popovich not happy about the play of his club recently over the last 11 games. They've won five. They've They've lost six, although this is, with a record of 19 and 9, the second best start in the history of the franchise. Talking with Greg last night, he just feels the edge has not been there. Well, the expectation level is so high for this team, Marv. You know, when you come off a championship and then you start out 13 and 3, you hit a little bump in the road, and now you just got to battle through it. But they really miss Sean Elliott, what he brings to this team defensively and offensively, and it's starting to show. The game is tied. At six, four minutes gone by. Derek Fisher just came off the bench for Kobe Bryant. Capacity crowd here at Staples, better than 19,000, but it's, it's been a quiet crowd here, despite the success of the Los Angeles Lakers. Mario Ellie, played by Glenn Rice, and Jaron Jackson. Tim Duncan gives it right back, and here's Jackson for three. Kept alive by Robinson. Greg Popovich also telling us that here's Fisher firing. Greg telling us he'd like to see David Robinson, although he complimented Tim Duncan so well last year, but he'd like to see the numbers go up. They need more help offensively. Here's Duncan. Tim Duncan coming off the 6 for 22 in the loss the other night to Milwaukee and having his problems at the start. Well, he's gotten great position. He just been, has not been able to make that little jump hook. Missed about three of those already today. Six points, Lakers eight, and the Spurs six. Mark, with all the great defense that the Lakers play, their three big scores, Shaq, Kobe, and Glenn Rice, give them 67 of their 97 points. That's where their offense comes from. Spurs just one of eight from the field. Duncan 
Try to go Blanche, too strong. Robinson kept it alive. They need more offensive rebounding. You think with their size, they'd be a great offensive rebounding team. They're 22nd in the league in second shot opportunities. And a hacking foul. Avery Johnson took the hit. We'll take a break with 6.39 remaining in the first. Welcome back to Los Angeles, where the Lakers have certainly stirred things up. Doug, they come off the disappointing season. New coach, new system. No Kobe Bryant at the start because of the injury. Here they are with the best overall record in the NBA. How have they pulled this off? Well, conventional wisdom said you better get to the Lakers early because of the things you just talked about. But one guy spoiled that, Shaquille O'Neal, with his dominance defensively and offensively. So Kobe has gotten back to 1-11 with Kobe. And the scary thing for the league here, Mark, is this team, barring an injury, is going to get better as the season goes on. And a very favorable schedule upcoming Monday night home for Dallas. Lakers won the previous two against the Mavs. They do have a tough game with Phoenix on Wednesday. And then a home and home with the Clippers. Never has a home and home had more meeting. Both games uh, here at the Staples Center. Last time Clippers were here, they scored three points in the second quarter. I know they want to atone for that. Lakers eight, Spurs seven, six and a half remaining in this opening quarter. Harper gets it to O'Neal with a contact there, and the foul is called on the Spurs. Felt there should have been a traveling violation. Foul on Robinson. That's his second. That's a problem you have now. David Robinson is probably going to have to sit down. And now who do you come in with? Samaki Walker, Malik Rose. Both of these guys give you energy. But Samaki Walker really has been a disappointment. He's a bigger player. Malik Rose will give you the energy and toughness, but he's only about six feet four or five. And the other big man on the roster is on the injured list. Felton Spencer out with a, a strained left hip. Here's Shaq. He missed his first two. And the Lakers with a 9-7 lead. Well, Malik Rose off the bench, and he will check in. Now, one thing he will give you is energy around that basket. Barbie's very good at getting out and running on the break, and he's an excellent offensive rebounder. So the Lakers are going to have to pay attention to him. They do not want to give him little layups around that basket on second shots. Malik in his fourth year out of out of Drexel, originally a second round pick of Charlotte, his third year with the San Antonio Spurs. And as you mentioned, strictly an energy type play, but a very valuable guy. Lakers by two. Oh, Duncan's pass broken up by by Hunter. What a, a major difference it is defensively when you look at the Lakers in contrast to a year ago. Duncan able to hit. That's his first field goal. Well, when Phil Jackson was in Chicago, remember he had the Doberman defense, the quickness on the perimeter. Here, a little sagging containing defense, funneled into Shaq and going to his shot blocking and letting defensive rebound for you. So totally different concept, Mark. And suddenly we're seeing deflections. Ball's been knocked yes. away. Shaq is able to hit. And the Lakers lead 11-9. Three points for O'Neal. 5.35 remaining in this first quarter. Duncan from way outside. Not a good shot. Kept alive by Rose. Jackson. Well, we talked about Malik Rose gets in there, pulls that ball loose. He kicks it out, and he gets Jaron Jackson an open jumper. That's how you get your role players involved in the game with second opportunities. Race from deep. Aaron Jackson started 17 games last year, one of the heroes of the NBA Finals run, but this is first start of this season, starting in place of Chucky Brown. Good ball movement, Avery Johnson. This is the second of our doubleheader earlier at the Conceco Fieldhouse, Indianapolis. The Pacers knocked off the Knicks, 101 to 90. Led by Reggie Miller, who had 26 points. Spurs only three of 13 from the field. Jackson for three. And the poor shooting continues. Here's Green ahead of the field. AC with the rebound. And Rose gets to it. When we talked to Phil Jackson yesterday, he said, Doug, probably the first team to 90 will win today. Maybe the first to 80 right now the way these teams are shooting. You're hedging. <laughs> Ellie from downtown. Yes, Mario Ellie hits the three. And the Spurs now lead at 14-11. Have a 
Greg Popovich talking about Mario Eli yesterday. Like to see Mario get back to his uh, fiery style. One time last season, he grabbed David Robinson by the jersey in the in the middle of the huddle. Three seconds. It counts, and the foul. But now Eli has taken a different point of view. He was quoted the other day saying, "There's more to life than basketball." He said, "It's important to have peace of mind." And he said it's Greg Popovich's job to get get on guys. He said I'm done with that. He said playoff time. That's when my switch will turn on. Pop wasn't real happy about that yesterday. He said I want him to be grumpy. That's when he's at his best because what he does he puts the rest of his team on edge. And if you remember Mark last year they were six and eight and struggling. They moved Mario Eli into the starting lineup and took off from then on. So he brought an edge that this team desperately needs. And Terry Porter, who sat out the other night against Milwaukee, a question mark for tonight, is on the floor handling. Setting it up for Duncan. Hopper able to get to it. You notice everything is a jump shot for San Antonio, and they're not hitting any of them right now. Rice for three. The game tied at 14 as we come up on three minutes remaining of the first. Rose posting up on Rice. Spurs down four for 17 for the field. So that's just a mismatch right there. Malik Rose playing against Shaquille O'Neal. He just turns muscles right over him, takes the ball right through him, and kisses it off the glass. Those of you who watched the Dixon Pacers earlier are aware of the countdown to close out the century. We've been showing you top 10 moments in NBA history from the archives of NBA Entertainment. We continue with number five. Thomas wants to get it in quickly. Now that's a steal by Bird. On the race to DJ. The unmistakable call of Johnny Most, the voice of the Boston Celtics. Doug, I know you were broadcasting for Turner. You were courtside for that moment. Well, you know, that was an interesting game. When watching that, it looked like the Pistons were going to finally break through, win at the Garden, go up 3-2, maybe close out the series. It didn't happen. It took them another year before they could get the Celtics and eliminate them. All right, two minutes and 35 seconds left in the first quarter. It's the Lakers 16, the Spurs 14. Slow start for Tim Duncan, now being guarded by Glenn Rice. Antonio Daniels just checked in. Able to get the entry pass to Duncan, rejected by Shaq. It's a 24-second violation. This is where the Spurs get themselves in trouble. When that clock starts working against them, they really only have one guy out there that can create a shot, and that's Duncan. And the Lakers realized that, and they ran at him at the last moment. And the Laker defense we talked about, look, Marvin, a year where scoring is up. Points allowed seven less this year. Opponents field goal percentage second. Point differential their first. This is why they're winning right now with their defense, and you saw it in that last sequence. And the Spurs are feeling the effects of that defense. Just four of 18 from the field here at the start. Off of the one hop for Rice. Beautifully done. Lakers lead it by four. San Antonio now with Terry Porter, Antonio Daniels in the backcourt, Malik Rose, Tim Duncan, Mario Eli up front. Duncan setting the pick on Harper. Brown wanted a uh, travel on Porter. And here's Porter for three. Lakers in the midst of a 7-0 run. Rose trying to front O'Neal. It's called for the foul. Let's join Jim Gray on the sideline. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Marv. Well, of course, this is Christmas, and because it is Christmas, Phil Jackson decided that it would be good if his team exchanged gifts. So they all threw numbers out of the hat as secret Santas, and it was supposed to be a $100 limit on your gift. Well, Shaquille O'Neal drew out the number two. Check has the ball, and he drew Derek Fisher's number. So he had to get Derek Fisher a gift. Got Derek an $8,000 platinum Rolex. 
uh, exceeded the limit. He said, for family and friends, you exceed the limit. There are no limits. Uh, Shaq, in return, got a, a gift from Travis Knight. It was a couple of videotapes. Mark, back to you. That's my gift to you. I drew you. Jim Orr is a very generous guy, particularly holiday time. A.C. Green with his second bucket. He has four. And the Lakers lead 20 to 14, just under one minute to go in the first. Boy, how you close out quarters in this league is so important. Right now, the Spurs really need a basket here. They do not want the Lakers to go up eight. Backdoor pass from Duncan. Here's Daniels for three. The Spurs just cannot buy one. Lakers on that 9-0 run. Duncan rejected again by O'Neal. And the foul. Now three-second violation is called. Mar Marvin really shocks me that Duncan is trying to play with his back to the basket against Shaq. He needs to square him up. Shaq just stays down and he blocks this shot. But get him out on the floor, use his quickness. Right now, Shaq has him thinking. That's two of his shots that he's blocked during this first period. Nice stat line. As Shaquille sits down, Tim Duncan is one for ten from the field. 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. Remember, he's coming off a six for 22 game. Whether that's seven for his last 32, that, that won't get it done for the MVP now. Here's Porter. Rose. It counts. And the foul. Mentioned earlier what a quick leaper he is. Very few players have that ability to go up a second and, and third time. And Malik Rose is one of those few. When you think about it, the, the Spurs have 16 points right now. If he makes his free throw, 17. And since he's come in, he's gotten two offensive rebounds that could have led to five points. That, that's the little contributions that he brings, Mark. Uh, John Salmon came on for a cameo, and now here's Rick Fox. And Kobe Bryant checking in. Lakers with four and one tenth seconds following this foul shot. So Phil Jackson looking for a more offensive geared unit. Rose seeking the three point play. He's got it. Three point Laker lead. Kobe. From center court. So that's the end of the first quarter here at the Staples in Los Angeles. Spurs shoot only 5 of 24. Duncan just 1 of 10. Shaq 8 points, 3 of 6 from the field. Lakers 20. And the Spurs 17. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Classic moment is called by Johnny Most, the 1965 East Finals. That was Game Seven in Boston, and the Celtics knocked off the 76ers, 110-109. Well, how about with that two moments there? It's Bird steals the ball in Boston Garden to preserve a win, and then it's Havlicek. So a couple thefts there by two great Celtics, and three more great moments to follow to finish out the top ten. Second quarter is underway. That's Robert Ory with the ball just checked in. Shaquille O'Neal is back, being played by the 6'7", Malik Rose. Shot clock is down to three. Here's Derek Fisher launching. He's fouled by Antonio Daniels. And as we head to the foul line, coming up at halftime on net zero at the half. Chris, I think he's the MVP of our team. Magic from Jason Williams. Jason is the future of this team, and I'm here just to make sure that everything goes right. One of the most exciting teams of the NBA as we head into the new millennium. They call it now Doug the Y2 Kings, the Sacramento Kings of Jason Williams, Chris Webber. And Vladi Divac. Well, a lot of expectations on this team, Marv. They snuck up on some people last year, but not this year. Teams are ready for them, and they're going through a tough stretch right now. 
And a close-up look at those Kings at halftime. Lakers keep it alive. Fox played by Porter. Ori getting the screen. O'Neal. Oh, nice pass. Well, choke up with assist for Shaquille O'Neal. He, he's playing such great basketball. He, he's reading defenses. He's making passes. The defensive end, he set the tone for his team. I mean, I don't think there's any question, Mark, right now. He's playing MVP basketball. And even had time to co-host inside stuff earlier today with Kamad Rashad. Just an all-around guy. <laughs> and a minute in. Second quarter, Arv Albert, Del Collins, Jim Gray from Los Angeles. Kobe Bryant with the shovel. Kobe's first field goal. The Lakers have won 11 of 12 since Kobe Bryant returned from the broken hand. And on the recent four game road trip, he averaged just under 28 per game, shooting just under 50%. From the field. Well, all the speculation is when Kobe came back, was it going to destroy the chemistry of what they're doing? Obviously not. Nice setup for Fisher. Here's Porter. Hits the three. So Terry Porter, who sat out the other day against Milwaukee, that stopped the consecutive game streak at 358 dating back to February of 1995 the second longest active one of the league behind AC Green of the Lakers Porter able to penetrate the Lakers back to the offense they lead by five Shaquille O'Neal, that looked too easy. Well, he's got no shot. Malik Rose, he's going to try to hold him out of there, but, but Shaquille knows he can take his time. Now, what the Spurs have tried to do is double-team him, force him to throw the ball back out, and then front him, but Shaq is just beating him with one quick move. Ten points for O'Neal. Lakers by seven. Tim Duncan. He's trying to go glass, and he's... That's usually a specialty, but he's been too strong with the shot. He's one for 11. Bryant... Thought he'd draw the foul. And Shaq is right there. Greg Popovich wants to talk it over. Oh, he's upset. Well, Robert Ory just out hustled the Spurs to that loose ball, and it ends up in a dunk. But Kobe with the wild shot, sometimes he'll get a little exuberant with his move to the basket mark. But again, Robert Ory with a nice play there. This play by Kobe Bryant, I mean, you can't tell us straight that this is just great basketball. He splits the double team, the little up and under finger roll off the glass. And then Kobe on the break, and this is sometimes where he gets a little bit out of control. You see, he takes a very difficult shot, trying to draw the foul. Robert Ory with the loose ball. He finds Shaquille O'Neal with the power dunk. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas from all of us at NBC Sports. We welcome you back to the brand new Staples Center, downtown Los Angeles. Kobe Bryant of the 22 and five Lakers, the best record in the NBA, lead the Pacific by two games over Portland, four over Seattle, four and a half in front of Phoenix, coming off a win in Boston on Monday night to complete a sweep of the four-game road trip. No question that this has got much better than even Phil Jackson thought. Well, he thought maybe 7-7 seven and seven to get the season started, but uh, again, this is a very proud team, and you can see it today. Now, the Spurs need David Robinson here to score. That shot was deflected. Robinson again, and stop and foul. You know, there's no great love between Shaquille O'Neal and David Robinson. That goes back a number of years. David Robinson, who sat out for five and a half, six minutes, had to pick up a second foul. This time draws number two on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, well, David Robbins, this is when now he's got to score some points. Tim Duncan is resting. He's one for 11. And David Robinson, they're down nine. He's got to give him a little spurt here. The head-to-head -head competition between these two guys during the years, as, as Marv has talked about, in many instances has been very heated. You see David Robinson has come out on top. More importantly, the 4-0 sweep in the playoffs last year. Uh, I think that probably stunned as much as anything to Shaquille O'Neal. And you recall back in 1994, Robinson won the scoring championship with 71 points on the 
season's final day over Shaquille O'Neal. I, I don't think that was particularly appreciated no. by Shaq. With teammates uh, setting it up for Robinson to convert uh, 71 points to pull it out. Averaging 29.8 to 29.3. Now Robinson being played by Ori. Oh, that too much on it. And Johnson did not get ahead on the basketball. Well, you can see really that the Lakers' philosophy here is they're not going to double-team David Robinson because they do not want him to free up one of those outside shooters. So they're going to play him tough, stay down on him, Robert Ori, and then go up and try to just bother his shot, make him shoot jump shots. They do not want to let these three-point shooters get involved in the game for San Antonio. Eric Fisher, Kobe Bryant now the backcourt with Shank up front along with Rick Fox and Robert Ory. Here's Bryant. And the foul is called. Foul on Jackson. Well, NBA fans can log on to NBA.com to cast your vote for the starters of the 49th NBA All-Star Game to be held in Oakland, California. Plus, log on to NBA.com for breaking news, video highlights, real-time scores, stats, live audio broadcasts of every NBA game. And one of the places where you can still vote for the All-Star team. Kobe on the line for the first time. A look at the All-Star voting leaders in the East up front. You see Vince Carter and Grant Hill, Allen Iverson, Eddie Jones in the backcourt. Morning and Ewing. In the West, Garnett and Duncan are the leaders at the forward position. How about that front line? Shaq, Duncan, and Garnett. I think I can win some games with that. You and I in the backcourt might win some games there, well, Mark. Let's not get crazy, Doug. <laughs> Emory Johnson. It counts, and the foul. So the Spurs are down by six with 7.50 remaining in this first half. Here's Tim Duncan checking back in. That foul committed by Derek Fisher. Avery Johnson loves this little off balance, actually off the wrong foot shot going to his strong hand, but going away from the basket using the glass and a, a big three-point play. Avery Johnson, when he's penetrating and getting in the lane, last year in the finals caused uh, the New York Knicks all kinds of problems. Lakers with the ball up by five. And Greg Willard, the outside official with the call. Away from the ball. Foul committed by Jerome Kersey, who had just checked in. Now, this is a guy who had been missing from the lineup for some time, Doug, with a, a sprained ankle. And he provides a lot of energy. And Greg Popovich uh, telling us how much they missed Kersey. Well, toughness. You know, he, he's, a, he's a guy who's going to take hard fouls. Kobe with another tough shot. But there's Shaquille O'Neal once again. Looked like Robinson got a piece of it. Avery Johnson for David Robinson. Offensive foul. Ori took the hit. Now that's, a, that's a, a tough play for Avery Johnson because it's the third foul for David Robinson. And Avery has to read the defense. He put David in a position, Mark, where all he could do is fail. Full speed. If there's not a clear path to the basket, you can't give your big man the ball there because he can't stop that quickly. Well, David Robinson sits down. Malik Rose is back. Been a rough season for David Robinson, still bothered by that lower back problem. Doesn't talk about it, but a couple of weeks ago, re-aggravated that right shoulder. They're calling it a stinger, and you can see at times he looks to be playing in pain. Shaquille O'Neal. And Malik Rose with a good move on the box out. Percy. Well, Jackson would like to see Robert Ory get back to the type of game he played as a member of the champion Houston Rockets. Where he's hitting the three. He's one for 17 from the three this year. I think a lot of that was he got himself out of shape and was hurt, and now he's just working himself back into condition. All right, Lakers. Back to the offense. And a bad pass. 6.23 remaining. In this first half, Lakers lead by five. We'll be right back. Uh, here comes Willis, and the crowd is going wild. Playing against the greatest center of all time.
and you're going to try to do it on one leg. Left side of the lane, outside Reed, jumps from 20. Yes! We have a new NBA champion. Doug, most astounding, the announcer on that game for the Knicks was only 12 years old. <laughs> I was just getting ready to ask you, how, what did that feel like being in the garden that day? That'd be some kind of thrill for you. It, it, obviously, it, it was, but you know what's most amazing about that game, and people forget that Walt Clyde Frazier had one of the most magnificent performances in NBA history in a big game setting. 36 points, 19 assists, although obviously the, the drama revolved around the inspirational entrance of Willis Reed. As Tim Duncan misses again, he's one for 12 from the field. Lakers 30, Spurs 25 with just under six remaining in the first half. Kobe Bryant with that hesitation dribble. Well, that's a dangerous pass, and Robert Ory got away with it, firing it into the crowd, and a foul is called. It's against the Spurs. It's on Rose, his third. Mark, one of the things you really need to talk about is Sean Elliott. They, they are really missing this guy right now. One of the places they miss him is defensively. He's been such an underrated defender, but look, in eight of the nine losses, look what the guy that Sean Elliott would have been guarding scored. Look, 25, 25, 31, on down the list. Carter, 39. And today, he would be guarding either Glenn Rice or Kobe Bryant. You see Kobe off to a slow start with fouls, but, but Glenn Rice has been off to a good start. So they, they need Sean Elliott. It would be good to see him get back this year at all possible. And here's Robert Ory extending to a seven-point lead. It was a very impressive list, and those guys probably would have done that against other people, but if you had Sean Elliott back, it would have been a shot that maybe one or two or three of those right. guys might have been stopped or, or curtailed somewhat. Or, or they would have to play him to maybe take a little right. away from their game. So it, it works both ways there, Marv, as you know. Samaki Walker has checked in for the first time. That's Walker coming out to set the pick on Fisher. And it allows Avery Johnson to knock down the jumper. But see, he needs to be able to do that because teams are going to lay off and make him shoot that. Oh! so hard you get a jump shot and about four seconds later Shaq is dunking the ball on the other end that's discouraging 14 points for Shaq Lakers by seven here's Duncan working on a double and he's called for the offensive foul making contact with Derek Fisher Derek Fisher is eyes up he floats the ball to the basket and look at Shaquille O'Neal power grace speed Shaq is having a lot of fun playing basketball right now. His team is playing well, and he's playing the best basketball all around of his career on both ends of the floor. Duncan picked up his second. Two on Duncan, three on Robinson. And Robert Corey able to go glass. Lakers 36, the Spurs 27. Danger time here for San Antonio. They're not a team that can get themselves out of a big hole. They need a basket here, Mark. We come up on four minutes left in the first half, and Duncan is headed to the foul line. That's three on Shaq. Part of the triangle offense, Robert Ory is right here. He's going to make this nice cut through the lane, and it's your power forward now. Nice little movement, not a lot of dribbling in the triangle offense, and a beautiful shot off the glass. Gil O'Neal will sit down after picking up his third Tim Duncan to the free throw line of 73 percent free throw shooter I don't think Greg Popovich has a choice here Doug he's got to take the approach that Duncan the guy's got to keep shooting despite the fact that he is struggling absolutely because he's the kind of guy that can make seven or eight shots in a row and, and if he gets into a rhythm that can happen now what he has to do is with Shaq out of there he's got to get into the lane area Robert Ory John Sally these guys cannot block his shot and he's just got to go strong to the basket nothing weak there no flip shots the Lakers by seven Hopper and Bryant now the backcourt. Cody with a behind-the-back maneuver and draws the double. John Sally up front, Robert Ory, Glenn Rice also on the front line. Here's Rice extending and gets the roll. Ten points for Rice. Lakers 38, Spurs 29. Kelly played on the switch by Sally. It was nearly picked off and then stolen by Rice.
Rice was feeling for Ellie. Ori, oh, good look to get it to Sally. How about John Sally? 35 years old, 11th NBA season. Made a comeback after sitting out for a couple of years and has contributed with valuable minutes off the bench. Well, you know, what you're seeing right now with this Laker team is a very unselfish team. They're all making the extra pass, and when you do that, the game is fun. John Sally moving the basketball. Glenn Rice off the dribble, gets in the lane. Shaq is out of the game right now, so he's going to have to look to score a few more points. It's a nice little roll. And then the ball movement, the swinging out of the double team. Rice in the post. He gives the ball up. Robert Ory looks like he has a bare three here, and he does. Sally finds the open area. Ory finds him. The little pump fake and the dunk. They're making the game look very easy right now. John Sally, whose most recent brush with the NBA was two years ago as a member of NBC's Showtime studio show. And back on the floor. So the Lakers have their biggest lead of the game. It will be San Antonio ball. And there you see part of the story. Lakers in the paint have just eaten up the Spurs. Again, the Laker philosophy on defense. We're going to make teams shoot jump shots. We're going to rebound the ball. We're not going to give you any easy baskets. They have three fast break points. Every basket has been earned today, Mark. Ellie got the stamp and drew the foul. So Mario Ellie is headed to the free throw line. A timeout called 255 left of the half. All right, thank you, Hannah. And the Sacramento Kings lead the NBA in scoring, averaging 104 in change. Remember last year, they were the only team in the league to average 100 points per game. But well, how about this, though? Detroit, Orlando, Milwaukee, it's sort of become the wild, wild east. Yeah. And the defensive West now, we've flipped. And, Marv, you know what happens if you've seen it through the years is the team that's winning out in that division sort of sets the tone. And San Antonio being the best defensive teams, these other teams are starting to play now. Portland, the Lakers, realizing they have to defend if they're going to be champions. Now you look at the San Antonio Spurs record if you haven't seen them on an everyday basis. 19 and 9, lead the Midwest by two games over Utah. But as Greg Popovich says, it's it's a fake record. You said we haven't played a very tough schedule. Yes, uh, we travel a lot as see the Spurs making their way back. It's down to a seven point lead. Every Johnson with nine points. But Popovich said the record is inflated at this stretch. Well, I, I think that the difficult thing for them is after the 13 three start, you see Kobe with a nice little jumper there. This little five and six sort of reminiscent of the six and eight slump they went through last year. And I think he's looking for some kind of spark. Uh, to get this team going, nothing better than to play well against the Lakers today, but right now they're struggling. Lakers up 42-33. Two minutes, 10 seconds left, first half. From the blind side, Hopper taking the dribble out of the hands of Duncan, but the ball was kicked. So the ball back to San Antonio. You see the great start. Look, the points per game, terrific. They, they're now down seven in this stretch. Look, the opponent's points are up about five, but Mark, really what's killed them is the rebounding. They really depend on the rebounding, and Robinson and Duncan's points are up during this stretch. The supporting cast down, so they need that perimeter to come through for them. Avery Johnson able to hit with that driving hook. Right, those numbers tell you they're not getting help from others. That's why their scoring has been up. A steal oh, deflected out of bounds. Ellie. Nearly picked it off. You mentioned the six and eight start last year, which led to speculation that Rick Popovich was in trouble. And then the Spurs turn around. They finished 37 and 13 in the lockout short season and had that remarkable 15 and 2 run of the playoffs, concluding by beating the Knicks in five in the NBA Finals. Here's Bryant, lost it. Strip. It's a three on two. Jackson straight down the middle. Now we've seen now seven points off the break by Avery Johnson five and Jaron Jackson two. And that's what they have to do. Kobe with the one on three fast break. He got bailed out there, Mark, but that was not a good possession. Kobe a bit out of control, particularly with uh, Shaquille out of the game. Well, he drove himself into trouble there. The nice strip by Jaron Jackson, the three on two fast break. If you don't stop the ball, you keep going. You take it right to the rim and you lay the ball in the basket. And the Spurs need more of that. 
Mario Eli called for that foul. A reminder, next Saturday, NBC celebrates the start of the new millennium with a special Saturday movie presentation of Steven Spielberg's mega-hit Jurassic Park. That's Jurassic Park, prime time, New Year's Day at 8 Eastern, right here on NBC. A minute 35 to go. And the half, Lakers 44, Spurs 37. Duncan working hard for the shot, and he is fouled. So Tim Duncan back to the line. Robert Ory called for his first. Well, if you're Greg Popovich, you have to look up at the scoreboard and say it's 44-37. If he makes these two, it's a five-point game. Tim Duncan has shot one for 12 from the field, and David Robinson has been on the bench almost the whole half with fouls. We'd have to be pretty happy going in at halftime down only five points. Yes, Lakers led by as many as 11, and now it's down to a 44-38 lead. We'll see what's happened with Tim Duncan. It's, he's felt the burden to do more. In the first 19 games, his numbers were down. The last nine, he's carried this team. But as his percentage has gone up and the other guys have gone down, it's taken its toll on him a little bit, Marvin. Remember, he played all summer long. Now, he has not had any time off. I think mentally he's going through one of those stretches now that are a little tough. As Bryant made his move, a holding foul called on the Spurs. Both clubs over the limit. Ellie called for the foul, his second. And Glenn Rice to the free throw line. According to a recent story in the Los Angeles Times, Rice, is according to the story, unlikely to re-sign with the Lakers in the last year of his contract. Lakers now must decide whether to trade him by the February deadline or take the risk of losing him as a free agent. Mark, with all the things that they went through last year, with all the coaching changes and trades and all the things with Rodman they went through, they've got to have some stability. And I think what you're going to see, unless some knockout deal comes along, that Glenn Rice stays here, he plays. They try to win the championship if they can, and then deal with it this summer. It's still the best thing for him is if he doesn't sign here, a sign and trade with another team can get him more money. So I think they've got to stay as stable as possible unless something comes along that they can't say no to. One minute remaining in the first half. Duncan got the step. It counts and the foul. That was his most aggressive move of the day. He went with power. He didn't flip that little jump hook. He turned. He faced. Remember, no Shaquille O'Neal on the bench with fouls. Squares him up, goes strong, wants to dunk the ball and gets fouled. Nice finish, an opportunity for a three-point play, and Martin makes this, and it's a three-point ball game. Foul committed by Sally. And it is down to a three-point Laker lead. They led by as many as 11. They were up 40 to 29. Fisher with the lead for Ori. Rice. Ben Rice able to extend over Mario Ellery. Very underrated low post player. Remember in Charlotte, they used to post him a lot. Lakers 47, Spurs 42. And the call against Ellie. Offensive foul. See, that's a tough foul right there. Mario Ellie pushes off. Now you're going to lose possession. It's 36 and a half. Can the Lakers get a two for one possession, or can they push it up and get a shot uh, real quickly in the shot clock so they'll get the last possession here of the half? And a technical foul. A T called on Ellie. Grumpy's back. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's, the peace of mind is gone now. You see the scowl. We'll have to see what happens now in the second half with Mario Ellie. So much for there's more to life other than <laughs> that. That's the truth. So Glenn Rice will shoot the technical. The first half for Rice. He has 14. Mario Ellie sitting down after picking up his third, replaced by Antonio Daniels. And the Lakers lead by six. Fisher for three. So they're looking for the two for one. Sally with the backdoor flip, and Rice is hit. Fouled by Sabaki Walker. So you got to come up with that rebound. They ran the two for one, as you talked about, of the set play to get Fisher three. That's the play that Phil used to run for Steve Kerr when he would come into the game. And he misses it, and then they get the rebound back. Fortunately, it's only 25 seconds to go, so probably the Spurs will try to hold it up for the last shot. Red Rice has come a long way after a shaky preseason. I can recall an 0 for 10 one game uh, for Glenn Rice. 
but he's really come on. Well, look how important he is to this team. When in the wins, almost 18 points. Look what his shooting is, and in the losses, about four points per game less. So they need him because what they have is a great low post player in Shaq, maybe the best one on one player in Kobe, and arguably one of the best shooters in Glenn Rice. That's a pretty lethal combination, Mark. Yes, Glenn, a three time All Star, still considered one of the best pure shooters in the game. Down to 15 seconds. Remaining of the half, Lakers by eight. Duncan. Out for Johnson. Here's the three. May have grazed the rim. Does not have three point range. And anytime you fake a shot like that and try to reload, very seldom can you ever make that shot. Final seconds of the half. Oh, Avery Johnson with the steal. Racing the clock. And time has run out. Johnson took it away from Fisher, but could not score. Lakers by eight at the half. Stay tuned for net zero at the half. Coming up after these messages. Hold on. Back in Los Angeles, Marv Albert with Doug Collins. Now throughout the season here on NBC, we'll be presenting a new feature during the course of our NBA coverage. Uh, we'll be listening in on coaches and referees. And tonight, we have the wireless microphone on both referee Jess Kersey and San Antonio head coach Greg Popovich. Here's uh, something that took place during the course of the first half. Take a listen. He can't have his hand on him, Jess. The whole time. Well, I just wanted to get called. It's the same thing. That's all I want you to do is coach. And I want you to rest. And we're going to do that. Because I don't I want your job, it. and I know you don't want I mine. Believe. No, I wouldn't take your job. I wouldn't have nothing. yours either. <laughs> I just think, you know, if, if. Everything is fine. Never mind. Never mind. Ow. <laughs> you, you know, Marv, what was great about that was, like, Pop was lobbying, lobbying, and he. Had to say he was walking away and he wanted to get one more in. It's like, no, 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 I better, I better go, you know. But uh, never mind, I, I, I've had my say, I better move on. That, that's great, and that's, that's great refereeing, and that's a, giving a uh, coach a chance to, to say what he has to say. And a wise choice by <laughs> Greg Popovich. Here's Shaquille O'Neal playing with the three personal fouls for the San Antonio Spurs. David Robinson playing with three. Garrett Jackson with the ball as this third quarter gets underway, and the Spurs allowed to hang around, trailing by as many as 11. It's a five-point game. Lakers lead at 50-45. That's why Jaron Jackson is in the starting lineup, because he can shoot that three-pointer. Kobe Bryant now two for eight from the field. In the first half, Lakers shot just under 48 percent, and the Spurs at 31 percent. Foul is called. It's on Rod Hopper. That's his second. Shaq six for 11. He had 14 points, five rebounds, three block shots. Len Rice, the high man, six of nine from the field, 16 points at all. Here's David Robinson, a very quiet first half. That's his first field goal. You see their little anger in David's face after he made that shot. He slapped Avery Johnson's hand. And he, he realizes he's got to score some points. They need him on the floor. And Tim Duncan with a very poor shooting performance, two of 13 in the first half. You hear the concern, the mumbling from the crowd here at Staples Center with the Spurs within three. Very much alive. Robinson. Finding Ellie, nice play, and San Antonio is with it one. Now, interestingly enough, Phil Jackson does not take a timeout. He's a coach that says, you know what, let's let the players figure this out for themselves. They're going to struggle a little bit here. Let them work it out amongst themselves. Let's see if the Lakers can do that here, Mark. Robinson over on the double. Hopper with the rebound. And it will be San Antonio ball. Now, correction, last touch by the Spurs. Lakers maintain possession. How about the leading rebound in the game for the Lakers is Ron Harper. He doesn't have any points, but he's played good defense, has seven rebounds now in the game. Just the little things that he does to help you win. He has been a very valuable pickup. Phil Jackson of the Lakers. O'Neal, and the rebound by Duncan. San Antonio with a chance to take the lead. Avery Johnson lost it. Duncan on the recovery. 
So the Spurs lead for the first time since they were up 14-13 back in the first quarter. And Phil Jackson unhappy with Kobe Bryant. Had some words for Kobe as that timeout was taken. Well, the Spurs needed this little spurt right here. David Robinson, little pump fake, the jump shot. You're going to see the emotion in the face. He runs down the floor, gives Avery Johnson a little slap here. I needed that one. And then David Robinson in the post. Sean Elliott cutting behind his man's vision, and he lays the ball in the basket. And then Tim Duncan gets a lucky little bounce here. But you know what? When you run the floor, sometimes these things happen. These are the ways you get yourself going. Two for 13 and a half. He lays the ball in the basket. And quietly, the Spurs have the lead. Welcome back to Los Angeles. I'm Jim Gray. I'm now joined by Jelly Bean, Joe Bryant, the father of Kobe. You've got a new assignment. Kobe just bought a team over in Milan, Italy, and you are going to be the president. You're going to be spending a couple of weeks with this team. It's got Pooh Richardson, Sean Respert. What's the idea here? Well, I'm very excited about it. I think it's a great opportunity, uh, you know, for my son. Uh, it's a dream of his to go back there one day, play after uh, he's finished his dream here in the, in the, in the States. Uh, no, it's a challenge. I might have to go get some pointers from uh, Jerry West on how to deal with it, but it is, we're, we're excited. The family's very excited, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Now, the team is six and nine. And I spoke to Kobe before the game. And although he's only 21 years old, he says, there's going to be some changes. So what has he told Dad to do? Well, he's the boss. No, he was, no I, I think we have some uh, we have some injury problems early. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to change the Americans, you know, throughout the season. So once we get everyone healthy and maybe go nine, ten players deep, uh, then I think we'll be very, very successful. But right now, we're only five players. I brought in a guy from LaSalle University named Mike Gizzi. And uh, so I feel good about that. So we're very excited. Joe, Merry Christmas to you and the family. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right. Back over to you, Mark. All right. Thanks, Jim. Joe Jelly Bean Bryant played eight years in the NBA for Houston, San Diego, Philadelphia, played in Europe. A former teammate of yours with the 76ers. It's good to see Joe. Great guy, great smile, great family. Three minutes gone by in the third. Jackson with the steal. Jackson fires. And here comes Cody. Just two of nine from the field. Right around Jackson. Challenged Robinson. See the upper body strength that Kobe now has from lifting weights. He took the contact, sort of knocked David Robinson back, and was able to hang in the air and finish that shot. Lakers have a two-point lead. They've led by as many as 11. Avery Johnson. And here's A.C. Green. Green is up front now with O'Neal and Rice. Hopper and Bryant. In the backcourt for the Los Angeles Lakers, who come in at 22-5, best record in the NBA. They've won seven in a row, 14 of their last 15. Harper is open for three. That's a killer. Ron Harper not made a field goal. They double team, force him to shoot the shot, and he buries it. And all of a sudden, they're back up by five. So Lakers a little quick spurt. It's giving them the lead once again. Johnson, uh, Kobe Bryant said, hey, go left, and he did. Well, he's got that nice finish, and what they expected was Shaquille to come over and block that shot, but he just sort of a little teardrop shot off the glass right over his fingertips. Lakers lead 57-54. We play four minutes in the third quarter. Kobe with a bad pass. It's a three-on-two developing, but Ellie fires from downtown, and it will be Laker ball. Kobe Bryant, this is when he's best, and it's sort of that broken court where the defense is not back yet. And you watch him, he leans in, and just a bump that sort of knocks David Robinson back on his heels where he can't jump, and he finishes it. But, you know, Kobe's out of sync today. He got in foul trouble, and it's like he's the old saying, you know, be quick, but don't be in a hurry. And, that, and he's in a hurry today with his offense. You saw Phil Jackson direct some words at the Kobe moment ago. Kill O'Neal. Jack has 18, but Phil telling us that 
Kobe Bryant has been great. He's much more mature than he can ever imagine that a 21-year-old could be. He's very satisfied uh, with Kobe's play. Tim Duncan. Now three for 15. And the foul. It's on a puzzled Tim Duncan. That's a big foul. It looks like Shaquille O'Neal was pinned underneath the basket with no place to go and tried to lean back in. The referee ruled that he got pushed in the back, but this is a big foul. We'll have to see here, Marv, what actually occurred. A great catch here. Look at Shaq, the athleticism now of a guy 7'1", about 330 pounds, but does he get pushed? Oh, that's a bad call right there. He was underneath the basket, really only, really blocked his own shot. Yeah, no question that uh, Tim Duncan's right on with his feelings, but it does not matter. That's his third foul. Looks like the official may have gotten screened out off that collision. Well, Shaquille is now two for seven from the line. Lakers lead by five. Five minutes gone by on the third. Here's Duncan with a drop step, and he is fouled. See, there, there's a, an experienced player, Marv. As a rookie, you would never do that. He said, you know what? Shaq has got three fouls. When I catch this ball, I'm going to turn in there. I'm going to lean in, and I'm going to get the call. Now, it looked like Shaq got him, but they called the foul on somebody reaching in. It was A.C. Green. But, it up. but a smart play for Duncan to try to pick up the fourth foul on Shaquille O'Neal, knowing the referee made a bad call on the other end. And Duncan is seven for seven at the line. And getting the treatment from the crowd. A reminder, you can log on to msnbcsports.com and email Bill Walton your NBA question. Check out Bill's mailbag featuring his commentary on... Jack's difficulties at the foul line and the full potential of the exciting Sacramento Kings. MSNBCSports.com, the official website of NBC Sports. We'll have to remember that sequence right there. Tim Duncan misses two free throws and they're trying to stem the tide here. Can the Lakers push this out back to seven? O'Neal very anxious to go at Duncan. How about that footwork right there? Caught the ball at 15 feet. Put it on the floor, a little shake, and a jump hook. 20 points for Shaq. And the Lakers open up a seven-point advantage. Avery Johnson loves that running hook and gets the roll. Well, thank God for Avery Johnson today. He's keeping him in the game, that little screen roll and that little shot off the glass. That's about the fourth one of those shots he's made today. 15 for Johnson, a problem with the shot clock. And Derek Richardson blowing the whistle. They'll reset it. The, the beauty of talent in a big man like this, he fakes a little handoff, dribbles the ball, watch him, a little shoulder shake, freezes him backwards, comes up for a little right-handed jump hook from about 10 feet, and you can see the look on Shaq's face. He's very happy with that move that he just made. So the numbers on Shaquille, averaging just under 27 per game, second behind Allen Iverson of the Philadelphia 76ers, 14 rebounds in the number two spot behind Dikembe Mutombo, and shooting 57%, which is third in the league. So reset the clock, 21 on the 24. Rice with the inbound, nearly picked off, right behind the back, and Kobe looks to finish. The ball to San Antonio. Spurs have David Robinson. Tim Duncan, Mario Ellie up front. Aaron Jackson, Avery Johnson in the backcourt. Johnson had Hopper picked off. Here's Johnson. Avery back out the ball and pushed. Oh, that, if that's the foul on Shaq, that's his fourth. A little bump foul that will knock Avery Johnson down. That's a critical play. It's now 6-08, Marvin, in the third quarter when Shaq sat down in the first half. They were up 11. He had to sit down the last three minutes, and they cut it to eight. You see the little bump right here. You can see, oh man, that now that's that is a phantom call right there, and it's the fourth on Shaq. Phil Jackson keeping Shaq on the floor at least for the moment. That's six minutes remaining. And the third is a traveling violation on Duncan. Kiel telling us uh, yesterday that in the past 
Uh, he used to worry about picking up uh, fouls, getting in trouble, but Phil Jackson had told him, I'm going to stay with you on the floor, and he is right here. Somebody just picked up a technical. It must have been Shaq. Well, Shaquille did not like that last uh, call. Perhaps uh, a bit more concerned about uh, picking up the foul with lots of time remaining in the second half. So on the technical, Mario Eli able to convert. And the Lakers now lead 61-57. You know, Marv, when, when Phil coaches, he coaches always for the big picture of getting into the playoffs. And I think in a situation like this, he says, you know, there's going to be a big playoff game where Shaq gets a fourth foul, and he's going to have to stay on the floor. Yeah. Oh. Nice pass. O'Neal for three. Kobe Bryant on the reverse. The Lakers by six. the double on Duncan. Jackson, yes, from downtown, Jared Jackson. Remember last year in games three and four here against the Lakers in the elimination games, he was the eliminator, had 42 points in games three and four here. Rice, again the post-up move by Glenn Rice. See, he's a very underrated post player because when he played at Charlotte, they loved to run him in the low block. And when you're a great free throw shooter, you get in there and get fouled, you go to the line and you know, look at Glenn Rice. He's made 139 free throws this year, so he's getting to the line. Good defense by A.C. Green, not allowing Robinson to get the step on the fake. Duncan set up beautifully by Ellie. And the Laker lead is down to three with just under five remaining in the third quarter. This is the first of four meetings between these two clubs. Last year, Lakers took two out of three, but were swept in the Western Conference semifinals by San Antonio. Here's a two-on-one. Jackson takes all the way. He had no angle. Able to recover, though. Jared Jackson. The San Antonio has made a conscious effort to try to get some easy baskets, and they've taken some quick shots in transition that I have not seen in the last 12 games, but they realize they've got to manufacture some early offense. Here's Rice. Spurs on the run, but the Lakers get back. Johnson going right at Kobe Bryant. Kept alive by Robinson, then swept by O'Neal. Lakers by one as we approach four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Harper. So again, the Spurs with an opportunity to take the lead. Duncan getting position deep. Tim Duncan, four for 17 from the field. You need to take his little time a little bit more there. Shaq's got four fouls and really can't contest that shot. I thought he was a little quick with that one. Duncan playing with the three fouls. What a performance by Jaron Jackson in the starting lineup for the first time this season. Timeout is taken by the Spurs. Jackson with 13 points. Five of ten from the field, including two from three-point land. 327 remaining in this third quarter. The Lakers by one. We'll be right back. One minute and one second to play. Chamberlain at 98. He can make it easily. In the chamber. The radio call by Bill Campbell. There is no video for that incredible performance. You see it quarter by quarter. 100 points by Will Chamberlain against the New York Knicks, March 2nd, 1962. Doug, do you think it's possible that will anyone ever score 100 points? No way. Again? I don't think it'll ever happen, Mark. But I remember playing in Hershey as a, as a rookie in Philly in an exhibition game and just thinking about Will scoring 100 points in that building. What, what an honor. 3.15 left in the third. San Antonio with the ball. Laker lead is now just one. Shot clock, now to one. Robinson, did he beat it? No, will not count, says Jess Kersey, who is the outside official 
at midcourt. Now see the ball has to be released out of your hands and the ball when you dunk the basketball obviously that ball stays in your hands and we'll watch here as this shot clock goes off. See if the ball is still in David's hands. You can see that was very very close. Here's O'Neal getting the roll. Shaq has 22. Lakers lead 67-64. That's one of those three-point swings. Instead of being up one, you're now down three. That you, when you play from behind, it's so hard to get over the hump. Teal playing with the four personal fouls. Three apiece on Robinson and Duncan. They double up Duncan. Johnson. Robinson trying to keep it alive. Harper and Fisher now in the backcourt. O'Neal with Green and Rice up front. Rice backing Ellie. Again, the good post up move by Glenn Rice. And Rice has 20. Lakers 69. The Spurs 64. Just under two minutes remaining in the third. Duncan, and he draws the foul. Well, what a great read by Tim Duncan that time. He sees the, the fronting of the post of David Robinson. He flashes to go high-low, and then the pump fake and driving the ball to the basket. That was a great read by Duncan. Well, you can celebrate New Year's Day with PGA Tour superstar Tiger Woods as NBC presents live coverage of the Williams World Challenge. Tune in as 12 of the best golfers in the world, including Tiger, Sergio Garcia, David Duval, and more compete for three and a half million dollars in prize money, with Tiger looking to pick up where he left off after the successful 1999. The Williams World Challenge, New Year's Day at 4 Eastern, here on NBC. Three-point Laker lead. So Tim Duncan has 17, although he's just four of 17 from the field, but now nine of 11 from the foul line. John Sally has come on for Shaquille O'Neal. Here's Rice. Duncan with the rebound. Spurs again on the run. Ellie, oh, nice push by Johnson, although Ellie blew the layup. Minute and a half left in the third. Sally with a backdoor flip for Green. Duncan had it knocked away. San Antonio opportunity here maybe to get the lead with Shaquille O'Neal resting. Two blown opportunities on the fast break. Sally with the rebound. Harper for three. Avery Johnson able to save that outlet. Down to 45 seconds in the quarter. David Robinson now with 15 rebounds. Out of the shot clock. Duncan, but he moves on Sally. Did he draw it? Yes, he did. A charge. Offensive foul. Three possessions where the San Antonio Spurs have had a chance to cut into that lead with Shaquille O'Neal resting. Mario Eli misses a layup, a turnover when Duncan gets the pass knocked away in the post, and the offensive foul. So this is key minutes here, two minutes that the Lakers are buying with Shaq on the bench. And that is number four on Tim Duncan. Half minute remaining in the third. Terry Porter is back. Popper was able to go around him. Rice. Robinson did not want to pick up the foul. And it's a three-second violation on John Sally. So the ball back to San Antonio with 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Out of 10. Duncan. And he was pumped by Sally. Lakers over the foul limit. Tim Duncan spending much time at the line. He is 9 for 11 at the free throw strike. Well, the free throw line really is what has kept San Antonio in this game today, Marv. They shot so poorly in the first half, 30%.
but they were 16 for 19 at the line in the first half, so they were plus 12 at the free throw line. They're still not getting the job done from the field like they'd like to, but that free throw line has, has been a, a very big asset for them today. Here's Rick Fox back in along with Kobe Bryant. This is the second half of our holiday doubleheader earlier in Indianapolis. The Pacers defeated the Knicks 101 to 90. Reggie Miller with 26. Latrell Sprewell led New York with 23. Six seconds remaining third quarter. Here's Kobe putting moves on court and a foul call. But for the Spurs, their 14 foul. That's the foul they had to give. Two and one tenth seconds remaining. In this third quarter, Rice will throw it in. But before he does, a 20-second timeout is taken by Phil Jackson. Well, Phil would like to get a basket here going into this, you know, fourth period. They're up two. If he could get a basket to go up four, he's been able, again, to, to rest Shaq a little bit with those four fouls. But San Antonio is hanging around, and you have to like their chances in a close game because they are a great defensive team. And, Marv, you'd have to think at some point in time, Tim Duncan's going to start making some field goals here. Well, you look back to the previous game, 6 of 22, 18 points, and the loss to the Milwaukee Bucks at home on Thursday night. And tonight, Tim Duncan, 4 for 17 as you look at the leading scores. The San Antonio Spurs playing the first of a four-game road trip. The Lakers to be followed by Golden State and Vancouver. And Minnesota will be back home at the Alamo Dome Wednesday, January 5th for Seattle. While for the Lakers, this is the start of a long stretch here at Staples. Two and one-tenth seconds remaining. In the third, Derek Fisher looking. Glenn Rice able to get it away. And hit The Lakers 72 and the Spurs 67. We'll return after these messages and a word from your local station as you check out Glenn Rice. Looked like he had the foot on the line. A moment ago during that 20-second timeout, Greg Popovich warned his team about keeping an eye on Glenn Rice. Take a listen. Everybody else is staying tight. Staying tight with your man. Nobody's backdooring anybody. He's got to come out to the front of us, and we stay in front. All right? Let's go. Rice is the key. Oh, yeah. We're red. We're red. We're red, but I don't think but I don't think well, Rice was the key, and he steps out here, and this was a two-pointer. You see him inside the line, but the catch and shoot. Glenn Rice has 22 points now and has really helped Shaquille O'Neal, who's been in foul trouble. Big shot. You go up four because the Spurs have the ball to start the quarter with a basket. They could have tied this game. Yeah, so they did change it from a three to a two, so it's 71-67. Lakers has his fourth quarter. It's underway. Malik Rose is back on the floor. Tim Duncan tried to go back door, but it's kicked. And it will be Spurs in possession with 14 on the shot clock. Now, one of the things you have to watch with this lineup in the floor, Shaquille O'Neal is playing Malik Rose because he has four fouls. Malik Rose can only hurt him on the offensive board, so Shaquille must block him out. Porter guarded by Fisher. Here's Porter, way off. Antonio Daniels. That ball did not hit the rim. Rose realized but threw up an air ball, so now it is a 24-second violation. When that clock gets against you and you look out at this Spurs team, really there's only one guy that can create a shot, and that's Tim Duncan, and he's struggling right now, and the Lakers know that, so they're going to get the ball out of his hands. Robert Ory with Kobe Bryant looking for Shaq. Power in his way, but it will not count. The foul before the shot attempt. Greg Popovich was looking for an offensive foul. It's on Rose of the Spurs. Malik Rose gets in front of the post, and you're going to see Shaquille O'Neal dislodged with the elbow. Very fortunate there that was not his fifth foul because they have a rule now, Marvin, they said you cannot dislodge the player from his position, and Shaq had that left arm up. That's what Popovich was so upset about, and now the Lakers turn it over. Antonio Daniels. And Terry Porter in the backcourt. Tim Duncan, Malik Rose, and Jerome Kersey on the front line. Here's Daniels with the stutter step, and then threw it out. Duncan, yes. 
That's the, the first clean shot that Tim Duncan has hit tonight. In rhythm. That was a that was a shot you could see. He was in good balance. The Laker lead is two. Rice off the pump. Played well by Kersey. Daniels using the pick. Ryan able to recover. Here's Antonio Daniels, and he's tied the game at 71. Antonio Daniels in his third season out of Bowling Green, who resurrected his career last season, is first with San Antonio. Bryant was rejected, and back comes Daniels. Eluding Ori. Porter from beyond the line now shoots the two and hits. The Spurs lead by two. And they're doing this with Tim Duncan on the floor with four bench players right now. Good lift from the bench. Big positive sign here for the San Antonio Spurs. They've been looking for this kind of production from their supporting cast. So the Lakers will talk it over with two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. The Spurs have taken a 73-71 lead. Tim Duncan steps out, a little square up, a nice little balance. You see him, he knows Robert Ory cannot block his shot. The little floater in the lane. And then Terry Porter, up fake at the three-point line, gets inside the little leaping leaner. And the Spurs lead by two. Welcome back to the Staples Centers in Los Angeles. I'm Jim Gray. I'm now joined by the co-owner of the Los Angeles Laker and Vice President, Irvin Magic Johnson. Irvin, good to see you. Are you surprised at how well the Lakers have come together so quickly under Phil Jackson? I was surprised that we've been doing so well, especially when Kobe was out. I didn't think we would have the best record in the NBA, but uh, Phil Jackson has done a wonderful job. But Shaquille O'Neal has really dominated uh, and it's really heading toward a hopefully an MVP type season. What's changed with Shaq? All the things that people said he couldn't do with the exception of the free throws now he seems to be doing. What's changed? The defense blocking shots and rebounding. He's really been a leader there. He's really been from, from his defense has helped our offense and it's helped his offense because once he's aggressive on defense he's also aggressive on offense. It's a new building. What are your feelings on the team playing in here? Well I like it. it's generating a lot of money so I'm happy about that but also but we haven't really got our feel for it quite yet. We don't you know the crowd has got to get more into it but I, I'm sure we will as the season goes on and on. Finally your assessment of Kobe at times he's just phenomenal a terrific talent at times he's still a bit wild. What's your assessment? Well of course you know he, he he has to now get into Phil Jackson's system. Sometimes he still goes on his own, but he has a talent to do that. But if we're going to be a championship team, we're going to need him, Shaquille, and Glenn Rice to be on the same page, and then all the other players blending in with those three guys. Is this a championship team? Oh, it's a championship caliber team. Now we just, in games like this, we got to prove to not only ourselves, but to San Antonio, we're going to be a team that's going to challenge them for the Western Conference Championship. And welcome back, Mar. My boy is back on NBC. And with that, let's go back to Mark. Merry Christmas, Magic. Mark. All right, thanks, Jim. Thank you, Magic. Eight and a half remaining in this fourth quarter. The game is tied at, at 73. And they will jump it up. Magic mentioned the, the new home court. The Lakers are 12 and 2 here at uh, Staples Center. But uh, it has not been an exuberant crowd. Although today it has not been bad. But I can recall when the Chicago Bulls first played at United Center, Doug, it was not tremendous enthusiasm right at the start and then it picked up. Well, plus also these new buildings, Marv, the, the acoustics is so great, sometimes the sound gets lost in here. This is a beautiful building and Magic is a very candid guy. He said, I like the money that it's generating, so spoken like a true owner. Let's put those priorities <laughs> right up top. Lakers on the duo to control the tip. Fisher and Bryant now in the backcourt with Ori Fox and O'Neal up front. Shaq playing with the four fouls. Here's Ori on a catch and shoot. Well, we know he can do that, and that's a little jump shot that Phil Jackson wants him to take because the power forward comes in to block shots. If he can float out and make that shot, that would be very difficult to defend. Ori three of four. He has six points. Lakers by two. Duncan being played by Ori. Kersey got the step. 
Shot clock at five. A beautiful pass from Porter. See, Terry Porter is faking that three, and you have to honor it because he's such a terrific three-point shooter, and he gives him just enough daylight to get in there and penetrate and make those passes. Lakers at Spurs tied at 75. O'Neal. Allowed to get a bit too deep. He now has 26, but uh, Duncan being careful. I'll give it the four fouls. I think, though, that uh, Popovich would like to see Malik Rose take those fouls. They can live with the fouls from Malik Rose. They can't with Duncan. There's a moving screen. Well, the foul on Rose. The ball back to the Lakers. David Robinson has sat out for some time. Robinson with three fouls, but very quiet. Just one of five for five points. And this comes after the, the conversation we had last time with Greg Popovich, who who said he'd like to see uh, David. It's not going to get back to what he was offensively, but would like to see more from David Robinson. The, the one thing it's, it's, that we see is David is checking in right now. He has been more active on the offensive boards. He's made a commitment to try to get in there and get some second shots, which has helped his team, but he hasn't been able to finish them yet. It's amazing. He can make two bad plays, but it doesn't discourage him. I mean, he comes right back. What, what a sign of tremendous confidence. 13 for Bryant, although he has not shot well. He's 5 for 16 from the field. Lakers 79 of the Spurs, 75. Duncan off the double and foul. Bryant came around the, the blind side and picked up the foul that's three on Kobe I think Kobe's the best player in the game on the baseline his ability to squeeze shots over there use the glass that time the up and under but look at the quickness and this is Tim Duncan all league defense David Robinson he gets in between both of them and lays the ball in the basket six four to go in the fourth quarter Lakers by four stock for three stock got it watch this fantastic move by the doctor player is Magic Johnson. Hook shot at 12. Good! Two seconds left. Garfield hurt at the buzzer. Threw one in outside. Now that's a scale by Mars. Steady have with the ball of all. Uh, here comes Willis. And the crowd is going wild. In the chamber. Stockton gets out of Carvalho. They double it. Jordan knocks it away from him. Jordan's got it. The Bulls can win it right here. Jordan. Open. Chicago with the lead. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? So there you have it, the 10 greatest moments. The call to Bob Costas on that Michael Jordan dramatic jump shot. Bob, incidentally, enjoying the holiday with the family today back uh, home in St. Louis. Bob actually gave me a call today, so Merry Christmas, partner. Good to see you in here real soon. 6.40 remaining. In the fourth quarter, the Lakers with a 79-76 lead on the Spurs. Aaron Jackson, who has had an outstanding night, has come on for Terry Porter. Tim Duncan, 11 of 14 now at the line. San Antonio Spurs have done a terrific job off the boards. And when you think about all the problems this club have been talking about coming in, lack of transition, not getting easy baskets, not rebounding well. Well, they've, they've turned a corner in several categories, although they're trailing by two. Here's Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, and it counts. And he'll head to the line. I couldn't agree with you more, you know, Marv, in terms of the positive things that San Antonio has done today. They want to win this basketball game, and the question is, what are they going to do with Shaquille O'Neal? They do not want a double team, but when he gets his ball so deep, you are in trouble. One little power dribble, and he muscles through the double team, and the nice little soft roll. And then the three-point play, which is even more of a killer when he steps up there and makes that free throw in the fourth period. He's down three of eight at the line. The foul was called on Avery Johnson, who was trying to help out. So the Lakers lead by five. Chat of defense from the crowd. They double up on Duncan. Jackson. And Fox 
is fouled by Robinson. A great effort on the offensive backboard that time by Tim Duncan. He tries to knock the ball loose, and he actually hit it so hard, it hit it in David Robinson's face. He couldn't catch it and control it, and then he got the foul. For a piece on Robinson and Duncan. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Jim Gray. Second of the doubleheader. Indiana beating the New York Knicks earlier tonight. Shaquille O'Neal keeping it alive. Fox. O'Neal with the drop step. Very close to a travel. But a foul call. Offensive foul. That's five on O'Neal. Shaq likes to make that little hop step when he comes into the lane, when he goes into the middle to his right. Now watch how he hops when he lowers his right shoulder. And when that right shoulder goes down, that sends a red flag to the official, dislodging, using your shoulder to get the position. Now five fouls. Shaq has to sit down. 5.36 to go here. Spurs trailing by five. John Sally played well with... Logging six minutes thus far in the game has come on now for Shaquille O'Neal, who departs with 29 points. Duncan Robinson, instead of trying to put it up, look to get it out. Bryant. Oh! It counts at the foul! Serving up a facial on Jaron Jackson. <laughs> of Kobe Bryant just takes off and accelerates the tremendous finish and listen to this crowd he is electrified them here with this move remaining in the fourth quarter. Yet another look. Kobe Bryant with the explosion and the Lakers lead by seven. Well, Kobe Bryant, who has not played well today, has electrified this crowd. The slam dunk. And let's just take a picture of the shots he's made today. The up and under off the glass finger roll. The drive to the basket. The bump. The continuation and the score. The up and under around Tim Duncan, and then this spectacular move between the Twin Towers. He has six field goals in the game, six of 18, and five of them are of the spectacular variety. Capped off by that. The stuff over Jaron Jackson. You hear the chant of Kobe from the crowd as he looks to complete the three-point play. You know, Marv, he's one of these players that you got to give freedom to, which the field is doing. And one moment he breaks your heart, and the next one he captures it. And that's what he's done today. Lakers lead 85 77, five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Duncan squaring up on Sally and going glass. That's the first time he's made that shot today, and he's been reluctant to take it, but he has to continue to take that shot. Seven of 22. For Tim Duncan, he does have 26 points, spending lots of time at the foul line. Lakers by six. Ori. Yes. With that little jump shot again. Now, Robert Ori is a very good shooter, Marv. You talked about that before. And if he gets into a rhythm, what a weapon for this team. And Phil Jackson says he has been satisfied with the combination at power forward of A.C. Green and Robert Ori. Robinson was lit on that lob. And it's a loose ball foul. Well, on Duncan, that's five. How often have we seen today where San Antonio is so close to making some positive things happen and the ball will roll off, they'll miss a dunk, they'll miss a free throw, and L.A. comes right back and capitalizes on it. They just have not been able to make that big play at the right time today, Marv. And Spurs now over the foul of it, or to the line. Five fouls apiece on Duncan and Rose for San Antonio. Shaq has five. Although Phil Jackson able to buy some time because John Sally has done a very nice job in coming on for Shaquille O'Neal. Remember Phil Jackson told us yesterday, he thinks the first team to 90 will win today. Well, if this free throw goes in, that's 89 for the Lakers. So San Antonio is going to have to go on a little spur here. Ten points for Ori. Lakers 89, Spurs 79. And of defense. The Laker defense has tightened up. Duncan 
hit by the shoulder of Sally. It's just the second team foul on the Lakers, and I'm shooting a fair. Well, the reason he makes that move now, once you make that jump shot, now you've got to close out, and when you do, now you can beat the guy on the dribble. That's why Tim Duncan has the entire package for a big man. Look at the footwork by Duncan to have nowhere to go. Jackson shoots the three. Derek Fisher with the rebound. And here comes Kobe Bryant again, putting moves on Jaron Jackson. This time lost it. There, there's exactly a microcosm of Kobe yeah. Bryant right there, Marv. No place to go, but he was going to force it in there. Phil will talk to him later after the game. That's four turnovers committed by Bryant. Ellie. Nice move by Mario Ellie, digging along that baseline. Lakers 89 of the Spurs 81. Three and a half left in the fourth. Lakers gunning for their eighth straight win, trying to make it 15 out of the last 16. Here's Ori for three. Oh, that was not the intention, but he nearly got the ricochet. I think Shaq is going to come back here on this next position. Phil's going to get him back in the game. Duncan had it picked away. That was Ori who got the hand in. Down to three minutes to go on the fourth. Fisher. Robinson with rebound number 18. See, David has, has done everything today except score. Avery Johnson on the crossover, setting it up for Tim Duncan. I really like the way San Antonio is playing today, Marv. This is the most aggressive I've seen them in the open court. They're getting into a half-court game all the time, having trouble scoring. Today, a lot of opportunities in that, in that open court game that they need. The Spurs are within six. Ellie got a piece of it. Recovered by Fisher. Crowd was looking for a foul on Ellie. We're down to two and a half remaining in the fourth. Six on the shot clock. Rice off balance. An important possession here for San Antonio. Jackson. Robinson kept it alive and rebounded by Ori. A very strong game for Robert Ory. Now, Bill's going to take a timeout here, and the reason is he wants to get Shaq back into the game so he can have this offensive possession. So the Lakers call for time. Two minutes, eight seconds left to the fourth. Lakers by six points. Antonio's doing here in this open court right now. Here's a three-point shooter that's going to go to the corner. Here's Tim Duncan that's going to be underneath the basket. And Avery Johnson just breaks the defensive down. The Lakers do not get back, and it's an easy score for Duncan. I like when they play this way. I think it helps them make their half-court offense better, Mark. Timeout situation, San Antonio 3 and a 20. Lakers have two remaining. Shaquille O'Neal back on the floor. Lakers by six, 89-83 as we come up on two minutes remaining in the fourth. Here's Shaq and the foul. So David Robinson went up there to try to get that steal, and when he did, he allowed Shaq an open path to the basket. Duncan had to come over to take that foul, otherwise it's an easy two points. So Tim Duncan has fouled out. He's fouled out for the first time this season. And Shaquille on the line. Three of eight from the foul line. He is one for one in this fourth quarter. Malik Rose now checks back in. See, I thought what might have happened in that possession with Pop would that he might have brought in a guy to take that foul with Shaq, maybe take Duncan out of the game or Robinson, and then when he was shooting his free throw, maybe bring them back in. But when David tried to get that steal, he really exposed Duncan around the basket. Well, how about Shaq? 43%. At the line this season, but now two for two in the fourth quarter. And Phil Jackson telling us last night he feels that Shaq's concentration has been better in the fourth quarter, and he's been making his free throws. You see Phil with a little smile on his face, and you think that that doesn't make Shaq feel good? That's better than any dunk he could ever get. Lakers lead by eight. Robinson. A long night offensively for David. One for seven from the field. A minute 40 to go in this fourth quarter. Ori. Try to find O'Neal. Oh, uh, only try to pull that pass back, but could not. 
Lakers back in possession, looking to wrap up their eighth straight win, 15 of the last 16, and a record of 23 and 5, the best in the NBA. Shot clock, out of five. Look at Kobe Bryant operating. With the jump shot. He doesn't do anything simply. That ball went through his legs about six times before he took that shot. Rose for Robinson and a foul on Ori. You know who he reminded me of this play? Isaiah Thomas when he was in his corner. Yes. The way he would square a guy up. And watch Kobe square him up between the legs once, twice, three times. Now he's going to fade away and shoot the little jump shot. Kobe Bryant. David Robinson, three of four at the line. One minute remaining in this fourth quarter. Well, the Lakers now lead 93, 85. Here's pressure on the ball. Look out. It's deflected out. Last touch by the Spurs. Yes, Kersey, with a very pleasant conversation with some fans behind us. Maybe that it's too bad that deflection did not hit a, a player in particular. Oh, Foul committed by Malik Rose. Mark, they're trying their darndest to get you and I here at oh, yes. this game. First of all, if that was Robinson that time, Robert Ory and Mario Ellie coming right for our laps. Mario Ellie with a good save. And Malik Rose has fouled out, joining uh, Tim Duncan on the sideline after picking up six. So Robert Ory to the free throw line. Two for two at the line. He has 10 points. Robert Ory in his third season with the Lakers after a brief stop in Phoenix. And four years with Houston, where he played a prominent role on the Rockets' back-to-back -back championship teams. At one point, people were talking about Robert Ory having Scotty Pippen-like qualities. Well, I think that was that run you were talking about when he was shooting a three and handling the ball and doing the things he was doing. He was actually playing defensive small forward as well. Here's Robinson. Gets the call on the continuation. The basket counts. And he'll go to the line. Foul committed by Ori. 52 and 3 tenths seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Lakers by eight. I think it's going to be a stretch to say the Spurs can win this game. But you know what? I think when they walk in that locker room, there's a lot of positive things that they can build on today. The rebounding was much better. Their transition offense was better. Now, Tim Duncan did not have a good day shooting the ball, but he did other things. Mario Welli played better. Jackson. So, Marv, a lot of positive signs today in the game, even though you lose the game. And I think the Spurs can move forward from this and win some games on the road and get themselves back on track. Foul called on Jaron Jackson. And it's a more favorable schedule coming up on this four-game road trip. Monday night at Golden State. Not that anything's a given because you are playing on the road. No shot finally misses here in the fourth quarter. That next Thursday night, the Spurs play in Vancouver. They'll finish up at Minnesota before returning home to San Antonio. But uh, they will drop to 19 and 10. And over the last 12 games, five up and and seven down so you know, things have turned after the good start for San Antonio 96 87 Lakers here's Johnson Robinson and Jackson for three fielded by Walker so Samaki Walker puts it down and it's a seven point Laker lead with 36 seconds to go Rice fouled by Ellen both teams are over below. Well, and when you talked about the Lakers schedule a while ago, pretty soft schedule. All these games at yeah. home, the only game that they have is on the road is the Clippers here. They've got a chance to run off about seven, eight wins in a row here to go with what they're doing. Now, they could be on a, a stretch where they go to 30 and 5 real quickly, uh, Marv, with their schedule right now. And yeah, this is not what Phil Jackson, who has a, uh, a realist philosophy, not what he expected. I can recall talking to Phil early on, and he saw all the problems of power forward. Glenn Rice was struggling. Kobe Bryant was out with a broken hand. 
Problems with the triangle. Guys trying to get it down, but here they are. About to go to 23 and 5 with eight straight wins. Well, when Shaquille O'Neal made the commitment defensively that he made, he changed the whole philosophy of this team. And when he did, he forced everybody else to pick up what they do up as well. And that was broken up by Shaquille. Shaq with 32 points to lead the way on 13 of 22 from the field, along with 11 rebounds. And five blocked shots. Kobe Bryant with 18. And uh, all seven is of his field goals of the spectacular variety. Here's Samaki Walker. 21 seconds remaining. While Tim Duncan finished with 28, although did not shoot well. Eight for 23 from the field. David Robinson with 18 rebounds. A clinical timeout has been taken. A seven-point Laker lead. Back after these words from your local station. A moment ago, Tim Duncan fouled out. Uh, let's pick up the conversation with his coach, Greg Popovich. A lot more than they are. You just keep this in your head. And remember this feeling right now. Don't lose. Really? See, you see what Greg Popovich is doing. Tim Duncan takes so much responsibility for the success of this team and puts it on his shoulders. And right now, he's discouraged the way his team played, the way he played today. And, and Pop is just trying to keep him up. And you say, well, why would you do that to a guy who's the MVP? Because you know what? He's feeling a lot of pain over there right now, Marv. Sometimes you forget the great players feel that way also. Sometimes they hurt more than anybody else. Tim Duncan, you see the uh, the stat line, 8 of 23 from the field, just not able to get it going as a follow-up to the 6 for 22 against the Bucks the other night. Foul was given, so Glenn Rice to the line with 18 seconds remaining. Earlier, Doug, you talked about the uh, vastly improved Laker defense. Well, the Spurs shoot only 37% from the field here tonight. Well, you know, when you when you read about the Laker defense, again, it's a different kind of defense. They don't have great quickness to pressure the ball, so they try to keep the ball in front of you, shoot jump shots, give a team one shot, and they don't turn the ball over. They turn the ball over least of anybody in the league, so you don't get any easy baskets against them. You earn everything, and that's what's happened today, and that's why the Spurs are shooting 37 percent. 25 points for Rice. We're down to 10 seconds. Antonio Daniels. Here's Jerome Kersey. Lakers now lead 99 to 93. So the Los Angeles Lakers go to a record of 23 and 5. Off to a stern start. Eight straight wins. 15 of the last 16. While the Spurs drop to 19 and 10. Lakers now 13 of 15 of the W column.